Well, congratulations on surviving the Lagrange video, um, and uh, hopefully if things go as planned, this one will be a little bit shorter tonight. I think you've survived the biggest bear. And at this point, we're ready to kind of focus in on reviewing the t all the stuff we've learned about a Taylor series. Um, I've gone over the last 10 years worth of AP free response questions, and I've kind of tried to create three more lessons that focus on the common trends and themes that we're going to see on those questions when we get to the free response section. And tonight, I wanted to focus on a special category where they might ask us to find coefficients uh, based off giving us the nth derivative, and how do we interpret that function, and how do we evaluate it, and how do we put it all together to find the coefficients. So, first of all, I want to get the bad news out of the way. What do we have here in the table? What we have here in the table is what we affectionately call the big four, the, the four common Maclaurin series that we're going to have to memorize. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of anticipate the worst case scenarios tonight. I still think on the exam there's, you know, I would say there's probably a 70% chance that you're going to use one of the big fours. What we're going to look at tonight in this video is the other 30%. What if it's not um, one of these big four? And then the other thing you got to keep in mind is they might talk about sine of x, but again, if they want to center it at something other than zero, you know, if they want to center it at pi, then all of a sudden the big four goes out the window and I can't use this function that I memorized, okay? So the big four um, is very prevalent, very popular, but it only works if it's centered at zero. So here's our first example tonight. It's kind of a mouthful, so we'll try to dissect it here. First of all, they're saying um, f of two is equal to a five, and at the nth derivative, of f at x equals 2 is given by this crazy expression right here for all n's greater than or equal to 1. Now they want us to write the first four terms and the general term for the Taylor series of f centered at 2. So here's the first thing we had to talk about. Is we want to talk about this expression right here in red and what exactly it does for us. So this is the nth derivative evaluated at 2. It's kind of an unusual expression. And it only evaluates derivatives, and I think this is worth writing down. It only evaluates derivative values for x is equal to 2. Okay? And basically what that means is it's a very specialized expression for evaluating all the derivatives just at 2. For instance, if you wanted to know what's the first derivative of f evaluated at 3, we can't do it. It's impossible. Um, because the expression we have only works when x is equal to 2. If you wanted the third derivative evaluated as 0, again, impossible because our expression only works when x is equal to 2, which is fine because that's all we need. We're trying to create a Taylor series centered at 2, so all we need is the derivative at 2. So really what we have is perfect for our needs. So the first thing I want to do, like I do most of the time, is I just want to kind of give myself a framework here, and I want to write out the Taylor series. So again, I challenge you, great time to hit the pause button, see if you can write out a Taylor series. Uh, first, you know, just start one centered at C, and then come on back and see if we have the same thing. So here's my expression, my general Taylor series centered at C, and you notice um, uh, the first two terms make up a tangent line specifically, and then you really see, start to see the pattern emerge. Um, and I had a little wrap around there. I didn't have much room. So you'll see I've got uh, the first four terms actually means it's going to be a third degree polynomial. But then we're going to tack on that nth term and we're going to throw the little dot, dot, dot at the end to really make it truly equal to f of x. So now here's the deal. Ours in this particular problem is going to be centered at 2. So I could imagine myself replacing all these c's with a 2 all the way across. Okay, So that's easy enough. And that pretty much, you know, that does a lot of the work right then and there. Now, the only thing left to do is to calculate the value of the first derivative and the value of the second derivative and the value of the third derivative. And if I can get my hands on those values, we're pretty much going to be ready to plug everything in and put the finishing touch on this problem. So here we go. Um, I need f prime of 2 which to me indicates that the value of n is going to be a 1 because I'm looking for the first derivative which means I'm going to substitute a 1 into all of the n's in that expression they gave me. So it's going to be 1 plus 3 factorial for my numerator and 3 raised to the first, which turns out to be 4 factorial over 3. And you're more than welcome to leave it as such for now. Now I need f double prime of 2. Now this is the second derivative, so n equals 2, which implies I'm going to substitute a 2 in for the n's. 
and it'll be 3 raised to the second. So I've got 5 factorial over 9 for that value. And then the last one I need to get my hands on is the third derivative, which implies n equals 3. So I'm going to substitute a 3. And let's see here, 3 to the third. So I've got 6 factorial divided by 27. So I'm going to take these three values right here and substitute them into these spots and we'll be ready to go. So why don't you try that right now? Try substituting them in. Now when I do it here, I'm not going to really simplify these coefficients at all. So feel free to leave them as complex fractions if you choose at this moment. So here we go. I'm ready to build my f. And we're going to say f of x is equal. So I need f of 2, which was given to me as a value of 5, plus the first derivative of 2, uh, which turned out to be 4 factorial over 3, and then the quantity x minus 2. And then I need the second derivative, which was 5 factorial divided by 9, all over 2 factorial, x minus 2 squared. Let's see here. Third derivative was 6 factorial divided by 27, and then that needs to be divided by 3 factorial because Taylor said so, x minus 2 cubed, plus, let's see, i got to sneak in a little dot, 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 plus. Now, for the nth derivative, um, I'm just going to copy down the way it was given to us. So I'm thinking n plus 3 quantity factorial divided by 3 to the nth, and, of course, that needs to be divided by that n factorial I already had there. x minus 2 to the nth plus a little dot, dot, dot. And there we have it, folks, the first four terms and the general term. Okay, our second example. Before I read the whole thing and fill in the blanks here, I want you to just to, you know, imagine this uh, function right here. And the first time I saw it, I was thinking, you know what? I bet I'm 99% sure they're going to center this one at 0 to make it a Maclaurin. And then I'll just refer back to the, the, the big 4 that we, we talked about on the first slide. And all I'd have to do is substitute a 2x and for all those x's and, and things would really fall into place. However, uh, they want to know what's the coefficient of this term right here. x minus pi over 12 raised to the 4th power for the Taylor series that's centered at pi over 12. Okay, so as soon as the center moved from 0 to pi over 12, um, our big 4 went out the window, and we're going to have to build this one from scratch, which basically, I'm going to have to take four derivatives of g so that I can f eventually find the coefficient that lines up with this term specifically. And, uh, and I knew it was four derivatives because the number of derivatives will always match that exponent right there. So here we go. The first derivative, and I'm picturing just a touch of chain rule here. I'm going to go 2 cosine of 2x. And as we get going here, really watch your signs. We're going to have to be really careful which, which ones are positive and which ones are negative. I'm thinking negative 4 sine of 2x. And let's say the third derivative is going to be negative 8 cosine of 2x. And the fourth derivative, and I'll start to use some Roman numerals there, is going to be positive 16 sine of 2x. And so um, what you'll notice is when you work with these trig functions, if we did enough derivatives, you'd see it alternates every um, second derivative. So you'd have two positives and then two negatives and then two positives and two negatives and so forth. Now what I really want to do is I want to evaluate the fourth derivative um, specifically at pi over 12. So here we go, sine of, now I've got to do 2 times that pi over 12. And what that's going to do is that's going to make this um, really a pi over 6, which is equivalent to 30 degrees, sine of 30 is a half, so 16 times a half would give me a value of 8. Now notice, 8 is not going to be my final answer, is it? All right, and I'm going to talk to you about a new acronym I like to throw at you here. And the acronym goes like this, W-W-T-D, okay? And it stands for what would Taylor do? What would Taylor do? And here's what Taylor would say. If you wanted that term specifically, that fourth degree term, Taylor says you're going to need the fourth derivative evaluated at pi over 12, and it's going to have to be divided by 4 factorial in order to create that term specifically. And as far as the coefficient goes, this right here is your coefficient. 
So I need to, and I've already calculated the numerator, which was an 8. So as long as I remember to divide that by 4 factorial, now I've created the coefficient, and this is going to be my final answer. So I hope that helps. We'll definitely get some more practice with this uh, tomorrow in class. And, and like I said, over the next few nights, we're going to focus on some specific tendencies that we've seen revealed in the AP exam over the last uh, 10 years and, and really make sure that we're current and up to date and ready to tackle these real big bears.